Oh my God, that's disgusting. Oh, look at that. I accept Microsoft's oppressive conditions. So a friend of mine was complaining that his laptop was slow. I tried remoting into it, figuring out what was going on, but I couldn't even do that because every time I remoted in, it would automatically disconnect. Had all these issues. And I mean, based on the condition of this laptop, the way I got it in it, it's a little dirty and you know whatnot. We're gonna be replacing the RAM and we're gonna put a one terabyte solid state hard drive in it. So that's gonna be pretty cool. What, what is all this? Is this dead skin? I have no idea, it's disgusting. You know what, I'm not here to judge. I'm here to help a friend in need, especially when we're using computers for everything. We got all these like errors and it's really slow. It's got a lot of issues. This thing's pretty slow. We already backed up all the data and now we're gonna install this Western Digital hard drive and this RAM right here. I got some tools right here and I got an extra mouse just in case. So we're gonna power down this laptop and we're gonna get everything installed. This is actually pretty dirty. So we're gonna put some gloves on and give this a thorough once over. Um, I didn't say this, but someone told me to be careful with it because if you touch it, you might get pregnant. I'm just gonna clean this off real good. Now we clean the outside, we're gonna clean the inside of the laptop. Wow, this screen is just covered in this powder stuff. The, the laptop actually kind of smells like laundry detergent or something similar to that. No idea what's on this thing. We've got the back of the laptop here and we're just gonna take our toolkit and take all these screws out. Whenever you disassemble a product or something similar to this, I always recommend you use a parts tray. Looks like these are all standard Phillips type screws. Usually all the screws on the back of a laptop are the same, as in kind of go with the same style, same depth, but always make sure when you take screws out of a laptop that you double check that because it can always be different. We never know. Ah, so remember I said there's some differences? Two different screws right here. So we wanna make sure we remember where those came from. Looks like the ones up here, at least in the middle closest to this bumper are the long one. We'll keep that in mind. The back of this laptop should just come off. We're just gonna double check for any screws that we might have missed. Cause we definitely don't wanna miss anything. I'm gonna use a, you know, good old knife and just see if we can just jimmy one of the edges up. Cause that's all we really need. We don't need too much. Oh, I got some movement right here. That's, that's a good sign. I got this part open. Yep, looks like the back part of the laptop comes off with it. So right now we're just trying to pop. Sometimes they have these little plastic pops in here and you just gotta pop them. It's these little plastic pops that were just really tight. And we are slowly taking it off, making sure there's no wires or anything like that on here. Back of this laptop is still somehow attached. So you can see all the dirtiness in here and all the dust from, I'm gonna say prolonged use and lack of maintenance. You can really see all that crap in here. Yep, that looks like a regular spinning hard drive. To take laptop RAM out, it's pretty simple. Open it up right here. They go up like that, just like that. You pull these things to the side and then it comes out, just like that. We're just gonna go ahead and pop this new RAM in here. There's one and two. Now to put a laptop in, you go in like a 30 degree angle and you push down. So it just goes in like that. Take both fingers and go to the edges and push down, just like that. This is nice, got a black PCB and this one doesn't, it's kind of ugly, see? So just kind of go in, both fingers again. Sometimes you might need to give it a little encouragement or push it in all the way rather, that might help. Now we're gonna take this spinning hard drive out and we see this ribbon cable here. We wanna be careful with that. We don't wanna damage that. We're just gonna be real careful with this here. So we're gonna proceed to take the hard drive out Screw here, another screw right there, another one right here, and another one right here. Got the four screws for the hard drive out. Some of these hard drives on a laptop have like a cage around it. Just remember to replace the drive, but not the cage. You wanna keep the cage. Slowly lift this out, making sure we're not pulling any cables or anything like that. So yeah, it just comes out like that. And this appears to have the, yep, the power and the SATA connector all in one. Try to gingerly pull that off. See this little cage around the hard drive? We're gonna wanna transfer that to the new one. Now we're gonna unbox our Western Digital Blue here. Hey look, remove before installing. That's a good idea, remove before installing. We gotta put this in this. We're just gonna take the screws off on the side here. That there. That one there. 
this should just come up. Whichever way they got this on here. A little tiny frame goes around the hard drive. It's like a sticker. Keep the correct orientation to tell it it's the correct way. We're gonna try to reinstall this just like that. So we just kind of pressed it in there and then we're gonna put this sticker back on in the orientation that it came out. It should go in the laptop just like that. And now we are ready to install it into the old laptop. See the connectors? You could tell by the orientation which way it's supposed to go. Well, obviously it's supposed to go this way. And these older style laptops had a uh, shock support for the hard drive. So you can see a lot of flex there. It's because there's a bunch of foam around it. As you can see, just like that, we're gonna put the connector on. Nice little click. And then we're gonna carefully put this into place. And we're not gonna tighten the screws down all the way, but rather we're gonna get the most of the way. That way when we're ready, we could torque them all evenly. Put this other screw in right over here. Now a little trick I like to use is I put the screw in, apply a little pressure and go the wrong way and go like that. You can hear that click. That really gets it in there. You can really hear it. So I'm gonna put this on right here. Wrong way, click, go in. Wrong way, click, go in. Now we got all the screws in, we're gonna slowly go around or rather go around in like a cross pattern and try to tighten everything down. And we're just tightening this down until it stops moving. We're not really like wrenching on it. So we got everything in we just wanna make sure if there's anything we disconnected that we put it back, make sure everything's connected. I don't see anything that would cause any concern. What we're gonna do is do a test to make sure the laptop still works before we button everything back up. And we're just gonna press the power button. It looks like we got fan spin, so that's always a good sign. Looks like it posted because it's saying boot failed. Obviously we have no operating system in it right now. We're gonna turn this off and then we're gonna button everything back up because now we know everything works. Try to finagle it, you know, get it in there without causing too much damage. Cause that is not what we want to do. Get it in there. And now we're going to put everything back together. Remember these two long ones went to the back and same thing, going to go the wrong way till it clicks, then going to go in and we're going to go about 90% of the way on all the screws. We're not going to go all the way down. One thing I like to mention, sometimes when you put these laptops back together, you want to put in the central screw and that kind of throws everything into alignment, which is much desired because you don't want everything to be off center. And again, I'm just putting these screws in about 90% of the way. I'm not going all the way down because we're going to torque all these things evenly a little bit later. So we got the screws in about 90% of the way. I'm just gonna give this a quick wipe down before we continue, because um, quite frankly, somehow more dirt came out. I don't know how that happened. We're gonna go through a star pattern going from the outsides going in. So we're gonna start right here, tighten it. And I'm just turning this until it stops. Very little, very little to no torque. So now we're gonna torque everything down, starting from the center going out. So now that everything's been torqued down, we're just going to do a once over to make sure all the screws are appropriately in and make sure we didn't miss anything. To do that, I like to go in the circle to make sure I don't miss anything. You could do it any way you want. The way you do it don't really matter as long as you check every screw to make sure that they're all in there. And all I'm really checking is to make sure the screws don't turn. That tells me that they're in appropriately. Now we are ready to install our operating system. It's always good to find out what the boot order or boot selection screen hotkey is. It's usually like F12 or something, but every laptop is different. We got our Windows 10 Pro installed on a USB. It's a bootable USB. And turn the laptop on. Lenovo just came on. Wow, look, since there's no operating system installed, it went immediately to the selection screen. Now we're just going to tell which one we want after we turn it on. If you don't touch anything for a while, it auto selects. So you kind of want to pick the one you want. And then we're just going to let everything load. Since it's coming off of a USB, it'll be pretty quick, but we're going to do this here in real time. I might fast forward a little bit. We want that United States, English, English, and we're going to do custom because we want to pick what drive. Obviously there's our one terabyte drive right there. We're just going to let Windows install on this laptop. We're going to do updates and all that good stuff. 
So that was it. We just installed the RAM, which these are the old RAM modules right here. We took out the hard drive. It's this Western Digital one terabyte spinning hard drive. We replaced it with a solid state drive. We doubled the RAM size. This is eight gigs, two four sticks. We put two eights in here. And now this laptop will perform much better. This is a good way to save some money. Right now, computer hardware is very expensive. There's a human malware going on right now, and that can cause a lot of computer hardware to be just outrageous in price. And we don't want that. The new hard drive in this will breathe new life into it, especially if you have like a kid or something, you don't want to give them an expensive computer. The hard drive and the RAM total was less than $200. I think it was like 180 bucks. You don't even have to upgrade the RAM really. That SSD, that solid state one terabyte drive in there really changes things. It makes everything so much faster. If you like what you saw here, if you like more tutorials or if you want to know how to do other things, please leave a comment down in the comments below. Don't forget to get subscribed because if you notice here, we have this thing called the red key. If you, wanna, if you want me to talk about that, it allows you to basically wipe any computer completely and fully before you ship it or you sell it or you want to sell the hard drive. It allows you to wipe it completely. So that's pretty cool. Again, thanks for watching guys. See you next time.